So we have fans and we have super fans. And then when we go above super fans, we have Peter Abbott, who is here today at the Leeds Horror Film Festival with the biggest collection of Thing memorabilia I've ever seen. Uh, Peter, thank you, first of all, for agreeing to the interview. You're welcome. Very much appreciated. So this is an amazing collection. When, when, when did it start? What, 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 was, what was the start of the thing for you when, when you first saw it? Well, I watched it when I was 10. Didn't watch it for a couple more years after that because it was a bit too much at the time. But uh, I think the collection had started when I bought my first VHS of it. And, and when was that then, when you bought the first sort of piece for your collection? That... I'd say that was about 85, 86. So a few, a few years after the film had originally yeah. uh, come out then? Maybe it would be a little bit later, to be honest, actually, because you, you, you couldn't really buy them, you, you just hired them. But yeah, that would have been the first one, the VHS tape. So why The Thing then, of all the different sort of sci-fi horror movies out there, what was it about The Thing that sort of drew you to start collecting for it? It, it was my dad. Uh, he came home when uh, it was the summer of 83. That's when it came out on, on VHS in, in the UK. And he came home with it. I, I wasn't really a big horror fan I wasn't into sci-fi <laughs> you know uh, and he just said you know we're gonna watch this film and uh, you're in for a bit of a treat so I didn't know what to expect and we started it we got into the film and he uh, obviously the kennel scene happened I was absolutely horrified by it and I was closing my eyes and I, I managed to get through it my dad could see I was visibly like shaken by it and he did in the calmest words ever he said um, that was a mild bit, so, <laughs> so that, that was me intrigued for the rest of the film, but yeah, that's, that's where it started, my, my dad uh, showed it me as a kid. Fantastic, and I'm sort of looking through your collection here, I see you've got multiple different copies of the soundtrack on different languages, different DVDs, different Blu-rays, um, out of everything that's in your collection here, what do you think is like your most prized? possession. There's a number. Uh, obviously the rotor is an actual piece of the Norwegian helicopter that was blown up at the beginning of the film. I visited the filming site in, in 2016 up in Stewart in uh, BC, Alaska. Amazing. Uh, there's not much of it left, you know, there's just the rotor assembly as you can see there, a small attachment to it. And there's small pieces of the set, brackets, nails, bits of wood. So obviously they're not quite prized. Crew jacket, that would have been um, some of the original crew from 81. They're my, they're my most prized, yeah. And I noticed you've got quite a few pieces signed as well by John Carpenter himself. I'm assuming you've, you've met John Carpenter then? Uh, a number of times, yeah. Wow, OK. Well, I've done a meet and greet on his anthology tour five times. And I've been out to the States a couple of times. They do really good conventions out there where a casting crew, the thing, attends. So just you know, lumping the gear over to America and <laughs> getting it signed and bringing it back, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. I suppose, is, is there any sort of pieces of memorabilia that you haven't got that that you'd be interested in? in, in is there anything that's like still like a holy grail well, for you? Well, the holy grail is McCready's hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I keep in touch with the lady, Jackie Irwin. Uh, she owns the hat. Her father was the helicopter pilot for all the aerial scenes in the film. His, his name is Nate Irwin and it, it's, it's common knowledge that McCready, uh, Kurt Russell didn't like to wear the hat on the filming set so as, when, as soon as the film had finished he gave it to Nate Irwin, the helicopter pilot who's sadly since passed. That's been handed down to Jackie so uh, wow. yeah Jackie and I keep in touch and uh, initially I got in touch to ask would you sell the hat? She said no that's it I've never asked again but we keep in touch, she's a, she's a really nice lady. I don't know if you're a, if you're a gamer or anything like that, but have you ever played the, the Thing video game? That... I did, yeah, I've got it up there. In the, in oh, is that there the, as well? Yeah, it's amongst the Blu-rays and stuff there. I did play it, but um, I, did, I remember there being a certain area of it I couldn't get past. <laughs> And I've, I've never been much of a gamer, you know. <laughs> there was an area where they were, they were going down like a square stairwell, footwell kind of thing, and all the little Norris heads were... <laughs> Coming out, I just couldn't get past it, so I gave in. <laughs> what was your, what's your opinions of the 2011 thing movie? Because it's meant, it's meant to be part remake, part prequel. How does that sort of stand in, in your opinion? It was a good effort. Yeah, that's as far as I'd go. I mean, obviously, ADI did all the practical effects for it because they tried to keep it as practical in honor of Rob Bottin's work on this version on the 1982 version um, but the studios just wouldn't have it so it's CGI'd over it which really spoiled it and there's this has its faults it's yeah. definitely got its faults yeah. but it's you know the thing isn't a huge franchise so you know the Halloween's the Friday 13th the child plays and the, you know just 
tons of them out there. Yeah. The thing's yeah. only got thing from another world and uh, 2011. So you kind of got to look at it as your little brother kind of thing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of it, but I don't dislike it at the same time. So um, I understand as well that uh, you're actually on some of the DVD and Blu-ray extras where you're talking about yes. the collection. Well, how, how did that sort of come um, about? A friend of mine in America, Todd Cameron, he was contacted by Arrow Media to do some work for their special features and they he mentioned to Arrow, you know, there's a guy in the UK. So they got in touch and said, would you like to put something together? So there's, I've got two. So yeah, so the Arrow, talk, we talk about the trip to the filming location in 2016. So that documents that. And then Turbine Media, who released the, the brilliant box set with all the goodies inside it. There's a small, there's an, that's an Easter egg, not on the special features. That's uh, just going over the collection, but it's at, at my home, you know, knocked on the door and showing them around and stuff. So yeah, so, that, so that's, uh, that's quite an honor to be on two of the blue rays as well. So it's almost like you're sort of part of it now, aren't you? Yeah. That's <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Right, well, thank you very much for your time you're and for welcome. agreeing to the interview um, for the channel. Really appreciate it. And obviously we're looking forward to watching the thing on the big screen uh, later on today. So yeah, thanks, for, thanks for the interview, Pete. Thank really much, much appreciated. Yeah. Thanks and, for the fans. Uh, we'll catch you again soon. See you later, bye. trust anybody now.